Well, thanks very much, everyone, for being here for this third event that we have put together. But now, if we can move to Tim Hess, and over to you, Tim. So, um, I'm a resident uh, of Penniston Stocksbridge, um, uh, a very enthusiastic environmentalist, um, but generally, I'm just like any av other average um, resident of our uh, constituency. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about an initiative that's come from the Penniston and Stocksbridge Climate Action Group. Uh, myself and a few other people have thought about developing an idea to create an energy and um, information group, uh, which will hopefully improve knowledge and uh, take up of energy efficiency improvements in the home. Um, the recent IPC report published by the UN predicted that we are on track to um, um, achieving a 3.2 degree increase in temperatures, even if we meet the Paris Accord climate targets. Uh, we are in a climate emergency, as, as Judy says. Um, in a world where we have 3.2 degrees of heating, we're likely to see um, significant um, droughts, um, famines, floods um, and wildfires. This will be our new world and it's likely to hit us, um, well, in the relatively near, near future. I certainly think within our lifetimes we're going to be experiencing some dramatic changes. So we are in an emergency um, and we're, we're probably one of the few people I'd say here in this group who are aware consciously of, of the calamity we're facing and, and is, is wanting to be actively involved in, in thinking about the future. The UK has made some very good steps in recent years, mostly because of a reduction in, in uh, gas emissions, uh, sorry, greenhouse gas emissions through using gas. Um, we still have a very large footprint. We, we uh, offshore a lot of our uh, greenhouse gas emissions through the things we buy. Um, our industry um, and electricity networks have dramatically reduced carbon emissions. But there's a few, couple of stubborn areas and they include transport and household heating. So um, if we think about our individual carbon footprint, heating isn't a huge, a huge quantity if you think about the overall wheel of things. But if we do all the other measures, it's the one thing that's quite stubborn in, in being difficult to, to deal with. And there's a, a number of challenges around heating. Um, so the people who are well off, who can afford to insulate the house and um, put on solar panels or put in a heat pump, those people will, will if they have a conscience to do that, will, will do that quite happily and, and not think of the cost of doing it. But uh, there's a large proportion of our populace who, who find this quite a restrictive thing to do both from a financial but also from a capability perspective. How do you go about doing this? Um, in order to in enact change, I think that we can't just rely on governments to, to make a difference. This is my personal view. We have to work locally and we also have to work within our communities to help each other so that we can come out of this climate situation. Um, I think over the last couple of years, climate change isn't just a topic that's that's reserved to the few left newspapers. This is something that most people would talk about quite happily, but a lot of people don't know what to do. So what came out of our group and some of the discussions and breakout groups that, that we'll be having later on, but that have happened in the past, the idea of creating this information service came out as one of the best things that we could do in terms of, a, I would say, an easier thing to do with less capability. So we've come up with a goal. So our group is at the moment numbers about seven people and we come up with a goal to create an information service uh, to provide friendly, accessible um, information to people living in Penniston Stockbridge on how to improve their energy efficiency and potentially use of renewables. And we'd also help to give people advice on implementing that renewable or, or energy efficiency change. There's a number of other groups uh, in other cities and within Central Se um, Sheffield Centre that are doing this on a voluntary basis. So this isn't something new. This is looking specifically at Penniston and Stocksbridge, at the people in our communities and the housing stock that we have. And that's the, we have a, a different um, demographic to most. 
um, and we're, we're looking to try and create something that's quite unique to, to where we live. So if you look at and think about how we're structured as a, in a constituency, um, we've got a lot of areas. If, if you look here, the purple um, are areas where there's um, high fuel poverty. So this typically will be in the more uh, denser housing areas within Peniston and uh, sorry, within Stocksbridge and Deep Car, and some of the rural areas are um, heading towards Barnsley, um, towards Dodworth and, and those sorts of areas. Um, there are some areas where there's very little fuel poverty, usually in the areas where it's quite rural and there's already quite a, the, the, the houses are quite um, sought after. We've got a challenge, I think, to, to, to help with our existing housing stock. Um, but if, if you think about what, what, we've, what has been achieved in recent years, there, there has been quite a, few, quite a lot of improvements. There's a report that I've, I've, I've picked up on recently that of the 39,000 households in Paddington Stocksbridge, there's 76% ownership, 9% private renting, and 15% social housing. Um, over the last 10 years, 26,000 homes have installed some form of energy improvement, but that could include installing a boiler or putting cavity wall insulation in, in place. But if you look at the sort of the, the low carbon technologies, the things that probably cost money, low carbon heating has only been installed by 360 homes, and we're looking at perhaps 1,400 solar panels that have been installed in the last 10 years. But if you think about that, that sounds good, but there are still um, 23,000 homes, uh, sorry, 23,700 homes in our area that are rated D or worse in terms of its um, EPC assessment. So we've the energy performance certificate. We've got a lot of work to do, but the thing about providing energy information and helping people insulate their homes is that it's a very quick win in terms of installing cavity wall insulation putting in loft insulation, double glazing. These things are relatively low cost and also get a very, very um, uh, favorable um, uh, payback period. It could take three years to pay back for your investment. And when you're thinking that these people are living in fuel poverty, it's, it's actually a, it's a social duty to make sure that people can minimize their bills as much as possible whilst doing the right thing in terms of a sustainable future. So there's a lot of work to be done and it's actually quite surprising that we're here today in 2021 after in 2015 we were supposed to have zero carbon um, homes being installed as a standard by our, our current government. And, but we've had quite a few setbacks in the, in the buildings industry and it's only now that we've got measures coming in and getting tighter and tighter uh, by 2025. I'm hoping that any new build will have to have a low carbon heating source touch wood let's hope that the government sticks to their current commitment so in the meantime it, it relies upon people in a community to get together to make a difference so the the idea of our group is in formation we're, we're we're working with other um similar groups around the region in york there's one in bristol as well and we've come up with some ideas as to what we might deliver um so our objectives would be to share knowledge uh, on renewable energy, make people aware of the sort of improvements they can they can bring in. So th that would, could be providing a list of energy efficiency and renewable technologies they could put in place and the sort of costs that it might require. Um, I'm hoping that we'll be able to go out and assess people's homes. So that does depend on how much support we get within our to our to our initiative. But um, it's possible to get a, a, a thermal camera and go out and, and find cold spots on people's houses. I'm also hoping that we would help people um, go about installing any energy efficiency improvements. May not be that we fund it, but certainly by getting in people in contact with uh, local installers and um, giving you advice as to how they could go out and get quotes. Because it's not an easy thing having done that this sort of thing at home. You, you need to be aware of all the the things you need to take into account when when insulating a house and in terms of increased ventilation if you're putting solar panels how do you connect it to the grid it's not easy at the moment you have to be almost an expert to do the right thing and that shouldn't be the case in, in our current day and age when we're facing an emergency so we also want to get people engaged so to do that we're looking to run some events to give out leaflets uh, create a website or, or a facebook page 
and we'd also like to work with local groups because there's a huge um sorry local experts I beg your pardon there's a huge gap in the um capability in our workforce to to deliver the improvements we're looking to to achieve over the next 10 years or so so it's it's about connecting up and, and working locally with people to try and get something going so i i think this sort of voluntary thing is one of the only ways that we can um make a difference and i think it's a very quick win um we're not going to as a small group um put in place green transport or um decarbonize our industrial strategy but, but as a small group we can work locally and work within with the homes that we have so hopefully in a breakout session it'll be nice to have some of your thoughts and ideas we're looking to run a session in september to get uh, everybody's views as to how we could take this forward um, and then start to set this up a bit more formally and look to get some funding so that's all i have so i'll hand back to yourself nick thank you Thanks ever so much, Tim. That was a very useful talk about how th that this group I is developing and what you're hoping to to come out of that. So